Hi, and welcome back. Uh, I promised in the past that I have a colleague working on PV data in Epsilon. Many people were interested, and now we can share some first results. Before we go into the short presentation, Laub, you are from Vietnam. You spent three months with us here for an internship. Could you briefly um, introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hi, I am Ace. My name is Lauf. I'm from Vietnam. I am 22 years old. Currently, I am in Germany for my exchange semester. I'm from Ruo Bokum University, which is the partner of my university in Vietnam, whose name is Vietnamese German University. So it's in my honor to have three month internship in Icony Solution GmbH. During this time, I have the opportunity to work with Dennis, and he has a really interesting topic for me. And later on, it becomes my, the idea for my bachelor thesis. That's a modeling the PV system in the Epsilon. Thank you. That's in my short introduction about myself. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I'm happy you liked the topic. Yep. It was very necessary to really spend some time and some thought on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, many people and also our audience, they know Epsilon from the thermal processes, from regular conventional power plants. And some people were very surprised that we would even do the PV here. So could you share a little bit where PV fits into Epsilon? Yeah, of course, I will share right now. So first of all, in Epsilon, we have the sun, the component, which is one of the most important factor when modeling the PV system. As you can see here right now, we have the sun angle, the azimuth angle, and one of the most important that you should remember is the DNI because it may affect to your uh, electricity production. DNI stands for direct normal irradiant. That means the amount of irradiant intercepted per unit area of your surface. And then we will move to the PV model. This is the photovoltaic system, or we usually call that the solar module. The solar module or the solar panel. So here is here are the two tables about some specification value in the epsilon about the solar panel that I show on the slide right now. Hmm. Well, I think it's clear that you can change the direction of the panels and so on. So easy to compare some results. But I would assume that yeah, just the calculation might not always reflect the reality. How did you verify the model that you made for, for a house installation? How, what was your approach there? Yeah, recently I asked for some for my colleague about the PV system in his house and here here is the the design that I model in the Epsilon about his model to uh, a kilowatt peak 24 solar panel uh, 12 of them are placed in the west and the and the remaining are placed in the east and one uh, storage capacity right here you can see one storage capacity is it about five kilowatt hour, and now we come to the result from one day. Here you can see the PV output from the colleague system is four point five, approximately four point five kilowatt peak, and on this day he could reduce on him by himself thirty five kilowatt hour per day, and from the epsilon we could also have four point five kilowatt peak and the reduction of the model in the epsilon is about roughly 42 kilowatt hour. The result in the epsilon is somehow a little bit higher than the result from my colleagues because in the epsilon we assume this. This is the Lear Sky model, no clouds or something like this. Yeah. yeah. So for this day, it both looks pretty similar. So I would say that is a good match. Yeah. Uh, but that, that was like a regular size installation, you said. Mm -hmm. We have those uh, limitations here currently in Germany, those 600 or 800 watt uh, balcony power plants. Uh, how do you have some tips for, for everybody from the audience who wants to rebuild that, how to limit the output? Since I think the, the PV area is, is bigger than those 600 watts, how, how would you approach that in Epsilon? Yeah, I will show you right now. Here in the picture right now, in the model right now, I put a control limit at 600 watt. But if you want to set it into 800 or some of the value, I can set it. No problem. No issue in the epsilon, I think. Yeah, and uh, I, I like that it's pretty fast and flexible. Uh, we had a couple of ideas that you just process pretty quickly then there. 
So uh, 600, 800 or storage or uh, consumption or yeah. some, some electrical car that comes into the, the picture. Mm -hmm. yeah, Epsilon is not made to design those PV uh, yeah, installations, but the, the energy side, I think that is pretty strong and this, this time series calculation yeah. that I saw you using. So many things that, that are there that are very nice to now evaluate the, the PV part. Mm -hmm. mm, what you, you mentioned it's a clear sky model. The sun is in theory from 20 kilometers height ab above the clouds. So we could compare that to the real measured data. I mean, now you use the output from the PV installation, but if somebody measures the solar data, uh, how could you process that with Epsilon here as well and compare? Yeah, of course. I just came back from the training with my colleagues in Swinburneberg and according to the training I had some of the meteorological data from his location mm -hmm. that I will put all of them into the Epsilon right now and now we can see that the result from the, the theoretical model and the real case model mm -hmm. here that yeah. you can see. Uh, this is the real case, no this is the Lear Sky model in the Epsilon and you can see that uh, the output on this day is about 3.3 kilowatt peak and uh, the reduction is about nearly uh, 24 kilowatt hour per day but in the real case model with the meteorological data with the real data we have about 10 point nearly 10, nearly 11 kilowatt hour per day and 2.9 kilowatt peak and there is about 40% difference between the theoretical model and the real case model. Mm -hmm. yeah, that looks big <laughs> at the well, first glance, but on the other hand, if we know that, we can consider that and so those data are, is there. Yep. But I think you're also going to look deeper in this, this real world uh, effects with your thesis. Could you share a little bit what's coming next? What's your next step? Um, yeah, in September, I will start to write my bachelor thesis and the title is the comparison of the result between two software, Epsilon yeah. Professional and PVSYS yeah. for the performance of the photovoltaic system. And one remark, uh, PVSYS is a software is designed mainly for the solar fuel and mm. Epsilon is the software designed for the thermodynamic right. process. And I think that it could be helpful for some of the colleagues in our office because, because I could so the strain of the yeah. epsilon in modeling, designing, in time series calculation of the PV system. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and epsilon has all those cap capabilities, storage, in, uh, in stationary transient uh, um, processes, mm -hmm. uh, battery, um, heat storage, and so on. So I'm, I'm really interested in those results and, and how the PV world and the energy world can be c connected there. Yep. So please, if you're done with your see this, come back and share with all of us uh, your insights. Thank you very much for now. Yeah. Thank you. And Dennis. everybody, if you have questions, let us know. If you want to play around as well, uh, have, have fun. You see a lot is already going on there. And I can share with you that the further developments in the background are going also on. And yeah, um, stay in touch. Have a good time. Bye bye. Goodbye.